Okay, so Rajat, you have uh, you must have applied for different IITs for PhD in India. So if yes, you have applied, then tell us about your experience to apply the IITs and your interview experience. Bhi batao ki kaisa aapka interview experience raha. So Jashan, actually I have applied to all top IITs, seven IITs, and then ISC for my PhD. Interview experience sabhi ka kafi acha tha. Like it was not easy to get into any IIT. Uh, coming to the point, first my interview was of IIT Bombay. So it was like since I have prepared from NPTEL and all like uh, IIT Mandi courses and then reference books which professor used in IIT Mandi. So IIT Bombay ka interview was like I felt like it was like bit difficult, but it was not IIT Bombay ya kisi bhi IIT ki baat karein. So agar aap NPTEL or IIT se hi padh rahe ho, to aapke liye jada easy rehta hai. The other thing is since I was from IIT, so मुझे gate score नहीं चाहिए था दोबारा IIT में PhD के अब के लिए apply करने के लिए अगर आप IIT किसी भी IIT से हैं और आपका CGPA eight से above है so you are eligible okay. to apply for PhD without any gate score valid gate score so वो एक advantage रहता है उसके अलावा questions की बात करें तो questions are like from the level is from very basic to very advanced so IIT bomb like they for a, uh, like IIT Bombay started from very basic question like what is how inverter works or like that and then there are many common questions which are asked in every IIT interviews so I gave interviews for can you tell us those common questions some two or three questions I'll definitely tell so many IIT Bombay IIC Bangalore यहाँ पे इसके अलावा IIT Madras IIT Kharagpur और IIT Delhi में interview दिया था so मेरे सारे ही interview काफी अच्छे गए थे but since सब जगह से offer नहीं आता है because there is some limit on students also and sometimes we make mistakes like I made in IC Bangalore because I didn't prepared mathematics and last time I studied mathematics in detail was around four or five years back. So math because of mathematics I was out out of the interview rest if like even professor of IC Bangalore told me that okay aapka core ka knowledge acha hai but you must have prepared mathematics also. Okay. So that's how professor told me so I was Happy also, but उसके अलावा common questions हैं जैसे एक आपको past transistor logic पे question बनता है अगर मैं digital की बात करूँ तो past transistor logic is very common like how much is the output voltage when we have three MOSFETs in series and three MOSFETs in parallel so that is a very common question then flip flop how flip flops work like how to make a flip flops using MOSFETs or MUX based approach those questions are very common then setup time hold time that is like the question asked in every interview, I guess, coming to academia or industry also. Those are very common questions and like inverter noise margin also and those type of questions from inverter. Then inverter chain, sizing of inverters. Those are also some questions. And coming to analog, there are questions from like why tail transistor? What is the importance of tail transistor? What should be its width? Then current mirror, those type of questions. Then little bit questions from OPAMP. How does OPAMP works? And related to some of them, numericals also. So those type of questions are asked in interviews of IITs. So if you have in-depth knowledge of those concepts, then you can easily answer all those questions. But I prefer to study mathematics also because like most of colleges ask mathematics in every interview coming from masters to PhD. Okay. So mathematics be important, equally important hai jitna core ka knowledge hai. Right. That's what I see. Okay, Rajat. So Rajat, uh, India has several top IITs, several uh, private institutions like Birla Institute is there. Then why PhD from foreign? Actually, <laughs> I got offer letter from IIT Bombay. I also joined IIT Bombay. Okay. So I was a PhD student for eight months there. Okay. But I can't tell you the exact reason, but I'll say like it was COVID time. So for eight months, I was working from home and some things were not working out according to what I thought. Okay. I resigned from IIT Bombay. Okay. So that's how then I applied to Kaust and I got off a letter from here and I joined as a PhD here. Okay. Here things are working fine also. So I'm happy here. Okay. So you have your experience of IIT Bombay uh, in PhD and Kaust Saudi Arabia as well. So what are the key differences you see in both? Coming to coming to the comparison of IIT Bombay and Kaust, first I want to compare like IIT Bombay and IIT Mundi first. Because students are also interested in what is the difference between tier two IITs and tier one IITs. So the one thing I found to so the 
course of IIT Bombay is little bit difficult as compared to lower IITs. Courses I studied in IIT Mandi for one semester, they covered the same syllabus within like two weeks at IIT Bombay or three weeks of the same course. And then uh, they taught much more advanced things, some little bit extra syllabus you can say. So, so the syllabus is also very important when you are studying any course. And IIT Bombay was like, uh, they will check every assignment in very much detail. Like for every assignment, for every student, they will assign a TA. Like a TA will judge the ass every assignment through like a video call or since I was uh, at home only. So they used to ask me questions like what you have written in the assignment, everything in details in, on Zoom call or on Teams. So that's how like IIT Bombay is different from other IITs. Okay. Similarly, like to the comparison of IIT Bombay and Kaus. So the thing I have seen in IITs is, is like for one year, they will only like students will only focus on coursework during TSD. But here in Kaus, it's not like that. So if you'll join, you'll start doing your research when you join here directly. Like okay. You have to do coursework along with your research, but the more focus is on research as compared to coursework. Whereas in IITs, we have seen also in IIT Mandi that first for one year, the focus is much more on coursework, like how to pass the course and how to qualify the qualifier exam. But here it's a little bit different. And also since all students are from different cultures and faculties are also from different cultures, the collaboration is much easy here with other students and faculties also. So Rajat, since you have mentioned the research uh, and uh, so what do you think, what is the importance of publishing research papers and uh, is it mandatory to publish the research papers? So Jashan, coming to the research papers, so when you apply to any IIT in India, I guess, they focus more on your in-depth knowledge, like how much you know about the course or some specific topic. That's how the interview is conducted. But when you apply to any foreign university, the first thing they will see in your resume is how much, how many publications do you have or the level of publications, like where you have published. So during my time, I didn't had any, but my interview was quite good. So I was able to join, I got an opportunity to join the course. Okay. But otherwise then there are, there is importance of publications during masters. So if you have publications, it becomes one step easy to join any university. So uh, do you think ki M -tech mein publications hona bhi kafi important hai agar hum industry ki baat kare, agar hum industry mein join karna chahte hain? I think not for industry ke liye utna important nahi hai. But the, I think one mistake I made was I must have joined MS instead of M -tech Because I didn't knew at that time because no one was there to guide me. Because M -tech is a industry oriented program. But MS is a research oriented program. So I think publications is important in MS as compared to M -tech. Because if you are going for industry, they don't look for publications that much. But if you are going for research, you, people look for publications. That's okay. how you are judged, like what kind of research you are doing. Okay. So I think I also made mistake like by joining MTech instead of MS. But yeah, now the when the outcome is like good, then I'm happy, like okay. Okay, great. So Rajat, could you please tell what is your project work currently in uh, Saudi Arabia? So currently, here in Kaos, I am working in SEMC department, SEMC division. And in that division, I am working in EC, where I am working in innovative technologies laboratories, in Spintronics domain, basically. So I'm working on circuit level, as well as a little bit on device level for Spintronics based circuits. What exactly is Spintronics just for the sake of uh, students? You know, most of the circuits like in current world are based on CMOS. Right. So in CMOS, you have seen like charges flowing from this terminal to that terminal. So same thing is like in Spintronics where in addition to charge, the spin is also taken into account. Like the charge current is flowing with up spin or with down spin like that. So Spintronics is that. Okay, fine. So Rajat, our generally myth that is foreign university is very expensive. So does it enroll in cost in a PhD? So is it really expensive or what, what exactly? पहली बात तो मैं ये बोलूंगा कि जब भी आप फॉरेन में अप्लाई करें पहले उसका फी स्ट्रक्चर जरूर देखें और ये भी देखें कि स्टाइपेंड कितना ऑफर होता है राइट लाइक इवन नॉट अबाउट कॉस्ट ओनली लाइक इफ इवन इफ यू आर अप्लाइंग टू यूएस देयर आर मेनी यूनिवर्सिटीज वेयर यू कैन सेव इजीली लाइक अराउंड 80 टू 90000 पर मंथ अकॉर्डिंग टू इंडिया इन रुपीस इन यूएस आल्सो वेयर एज इन कॉस्ट इफ यू कम टू द कॉस्ट द स्टाइपेंड दे ऑफर इज क्वाइट गुड 
but from the fellowship amount they will deduct their tuition fees and their accommodation charges and transportation charges also but even after deducting those charges you will get a stipend like in your bank account which is equivalent to like the salary of a vlsi engineer in india at joining so i guess you can an equivalent amount of money if you join an industry or if you join cost okay after like the masters okay so rajat at last i would like to ask ki any suggestions or tips to vlsi aspirants so that they can uh, join mtech or whatever tips you want to tell the only tip i want to give is if you are at home or if you are in any college any college study from nptel because nptel is a like collection of the best faculties teaching best courses so i think if i'll recommend like what i have studied i'll recommend those i won't yes. recommend whatever i haven't studied hardware description language course course from iit khadakpur by professor narendra nilsen gupta that is very good the analog ic design course from iit madras by sir nagendra krishna pura i guess and the other courses from few courses from iit bombay iit roorkee so those courses are quite good so i think that's the tip i want to give to students that go for nptel so much aware with latest news and latest trends going in the like vlsi technology industries so right. if you are aware with the trends you can follow the trends okay fine so thank you so much rajat for having uh, with us and uh, we have really got a lot of knowledge about the vlsi industry uh, various iids in india and uh, foreign universities so cost ka experience bhi aapko pata laga humne kafi cheeze cover ki hai ki mtech mein admission uh, kin ko lena chahiye kin ko nahi lena chahiye aur masters ke kya benefits hain iits mein rehne ke kya benefits hain aur phd from foreign aur phd from india to ye sab cheeze hum cover kar chuke hain तो ये बहुत ही अच्छा इंटरव्यू हमारा डिस्कशन रहा तो इन फ्यूचर हम ट्राई करेंगे कि आपसे दोबारा जुड़ें और हमारी जो ऑडियंस है उनके लिए काफी अच्छे अच्छे एक्सपीरियंसेस आपके हम शेयर कर सकें तो थैंक यू सो मच रजत रजत थैंक यू जशन से मिलकर काफी अच्छा लगा बहुत टाइम बाद